Hi, I'm Miriam, and this is my story. Please like and subscribe. I was born and brought up in London till I was 10. My dad's a doctor and mom's an artist. Both my parents loved me to bits, so much so that they decided to move to the countryside to ensure I grew up in a pollution-free, stress-free environment. And I wasn't complaining because I loved being close to nature. Also, I loved painting. Being around nature was a great inspiration. On my first day at my new home, I met a girl in the yard who looked my age. Her clothes were dirty and her hands were full of strawberries. She smiled when she saw me, stuffed the strawberries into her mouth, and held out her sticky hand. Hi, I'm Stacy. Are you new here? Yeah, we only just moved today. Do you see these horses? They're all mine. This one's Stella, he's James, this tiny one's Marco, and that brown one over there, he's Philip. Wow, aren't you scared of them? What? No, they're my friends. I'll show you. Actually, those horses were all ours, and Stacy was lying through her teeth. But I decided to play along. Stacy took out an apple from her pocket and went straight to the tiny horse. <coughs> Oh, sorry, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, see, he loves eating from my hands. You know what? I can even talk to animals, and I understand what they're saying. Like the other day, Philip said he wanted to marry Stella. So I told Dad. Just then, our new housekeeper appeared. Stacy, what are you doing here? Didn't I ask you to feed the hens? He then turned to me. Morning, Missy. Sir's looking for you. Dad, you know her? Of course. She's Miriam, Sir's daughter. Stacy's face went a bit red because her lies had been caught, and she rushed off while I couldn't help laughing. I found her super interesting, and we soon became really good friends. We even went to the same school. I'd always been a bright student while Stacy sucked at studies, and she wore clothes that were very ungirly. Baggy pants and loose t-shirts, that's what made her the butt of jokes in school. A girl named Jennifer was particularly mean to her. One day, she stopped Stacy in the school corridor. You're the daughter of Miriam's housekeeper, right? So technically, you're her servant. I was not going to let anyone bully my BFF, not under my watch. We're closer than sisters, and she's my best friend. But what would you know? You don't have any. I guess it would be better to have no friends than to have one that looks like her. This made me so angry that I slapped Jennifer, and we broke into a huge fight. Stacy also jumped in, and by the time we got separated by teachers, Jennifer's hair looked like she'd gotten an electric shock. The three of us ended up in detention together, where Stacy went on her lying spree once again. You know, Miriam, when I was five, I got lost in the woods for four days. I met an old woman there who taught me how to cast spells. I almost burst out laughing seeing the horrified look on Jennifer's face. When my dad found me, I was floating in the air. He almost died of a heart attack. Then when I came home, I cast a laughing spell on him, and he couldn't stop laughing for days. People thought he'd gone mad. Do you remember that spell? No, but I remember one that will make a person dance nonstop for days. Jennifer sat as still as a mouse after that and we rushed out the second detention was over. We both laughed so hard, and we knew we'd made an enemy in school. That evening, I asked mom if we could buy Stacy some new clothes. She immediately agreed, and we all went shopping. We got Stacy some nice dresses that made her look so nice and different. On her way back, Stacy couldn't stop thanking mom. She told me although she had a few of her mom's dresses, she didn't wear them because she didn't want to get them dirty. Do you miss her a lot? Sometimes. I keep myself busy so that I don't miss her too much. I've taught myself lots of things because I've always been a genius. Like when I was two, I could recite poems and write letters. I studied so hard that I became a master of algebra and psychogoly. You mean psychology? Yeah, that too. I laughed and hugged her tight. She was such a bluffer. I guess bluffing was her way of coping with the loneliness she struggled with since she was a baby. With her dad being busy with work all day, she literally had no one for company. Except, of course, horses, cows, and hens. I was her first human friend ever. When I was in 10th grade, Stacy and I were discussing our science project in school when I accidentally bumped into someone in the hallway. As I looked up, I saw the most beautiful blue pair of eyes staring at me and annoying Jen. Hey, don't you have eyes? Or has your silly friend cast a spell on you that made you blind? It's okay, Jen. She didn't kill me. Hey, I'm Chris. 
He's my brother, and he's strictly off limits for weirdos like you. Stop embarrassing me, Jen. I can take care of myself. Chris, you know nothing about these two. If he's your brother and still likes you, he clearly doesn't know anything about you either. Shut up, you witch. Jennifer was holding a cup of coffee that she threw on my dress. Jen, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm so sorry. It was an accident. Just then, Stacy stomped on Jennifer's foot so hard that she screamed out loud. I'm sorry, it was an accident. We both high-fived and went away. But before that, I caught Chris looking at me and smiling. For some reason, his smile melted my heart. The next few days, Jennifer followed Chris like a shadow. I got to know that Chris had been studying abroad and had just come back. He was one year senior to us. And once, when I was sitting alone in the library, Chris came and sat beside me. Hey, I've heard a lot about your mom, and I would love to see her creation someday, if that's okay with you. Gosh, I just couldn't stop looking into those big blue eyes. Snap out of it, idiot. Of course. You can come home and I'll show you her paintings. But won't Jennifer be mad? Don't worry about her. I don't know why she's acting so strange lately. She sometimes forgets that I'm the elder sibling, not her. When I told Stacy that Chris was coming home, she wasn't too thrilled because he was Jennifer's brother. She already knew I had a huge crush on him. That evening, I told mom that my friend would come over to see her work, and she readily agreed. When Chris finally came, mom greeted him warmly. But all of a sudden, Chris started shouting, Ma'am, I'm a big fan of your art. I've seen some of your paintings at a London art gallery. Uh, that's, uh, so nice. Uh, Miriam, why don't you go take him upstairs to show him the paintings? Thank you, ma'am. It was a pleasure meeting you. I was so confused at his weird behavior. But then I saw Stacy laughing crazily just outside the door, and I knew she had something to do with it. Did you meet Stacy on your way here? Uh, yeah. In fact, she was the one who told me that your mom has a hearing problem. Good lord, I swore I'd kill Stacy for this. Chris and I started going out after that day. He was funny and a nature lover like me. Jennifer didn't like our budding relationship one bit, but she couldn't really do anything about it. Once, Chris came to pick me up for a movie night. When I entered the car and tried putting on the seatbelt, it got stuck. He leaned in to see what the matter was, and suddenly we were so close that I almost forgot to breathe. Just then, Chris looked into my eyes and we kissed. It was my first kiss ever, and it was freaking amazing. I knew I was totally in love. Then Chris told me his biggest secret. Miriam, I want you to know something. I was eight when I had a terrible accident. Doctors had to cut off half of my left leg to save me. Chris pulled up his left trouser, and I was shocked to see that he had a prosthetic leg. I'll understand if you don't want to date me after this, but I couldn't keep this a secret from you any longer. Hey, don't be silly. This doesn't change a thing. And then I kissed him again. The next day when I came to school, I saw Stacy waving wildly. I ran to see what the matter was. You heard about Chris? He has a fake leg. What? I mean, who told you? Everyone at school is talking about it. I was horrified that a secret was out now, but who could have done that? I frantically searched for Chris everywhere, but he just vanished. I even asked Jennifer, but she pushed me aside angrily. My brother trusted you, and this is what you did to him? You'll never get to see him again. I felt devastated. I even went to his home hoping to meet him, but one of his servants told me that he'd moved to London for good. I missed Chris so much that I cried for days. Stacy tried to cheer me up with her silly stories. She'd force me to go on hikes with her, and she encouraged me to paint more often. With her help, I started to get better. Soon after, we had an art competition where the winner would get a chance to study in a prestigious art school in Milan. Stacy, if I win this competition, I'll literally get to go to the university of my dreams. <laughs> Don't get your hopes too high. I'm participating too. She then revealed that she was planning to paint a pig rolling in mud. Turned out that Jennifer was also participating in the competition. And I had to admit, she painted quite well but I was confident of my art skills. So I just focused on my painting, and it turned out to be more amazing than I'd expected. Our art teacher asked us to wait outside for an hour until the judges came and reviewed the paintings. 
I went to the cafeteria to grab some lunch and Stacy joined me there. And just then, I heard an announcement. Miriam, I want you to come quickly to the auditorium, please. It was our art teacher. I jumped with joy, thinking I'd won the competition. But when I got there, I got the biggest shock of my life. Someone had ruined my painting by throwing ink all over it. I burst into tears as soon as I saw it. Stacy also looked really upset, but she tried to console me. It's okay, Miriam. There's always next time. You can participate in the competition next year. Who do you think could have done that? I worked so hard for this day. Miriam, I'm so sorry for what happened, but don't worry. We're looking into the CCTV footage and we'll know very soon who did it. And sure enough, we found out the culprit and it was Stacy. I couldn't believe it, but the proof was right there in front of my eyes. Stacy deliberately spilling ink on my painting. Stacy, why? Why would you do that? You knew how important this competition was to me. How could you? Why? I, I did that so I could win. My paintings are so much better than yours, but you just think that you're the greatest artist and I'm nobody because I'm your servant's daughter, huh? Wow, so you've just started assuming things now? You know what? Just forget it. I'm so done with you. I stopped talking to Stacy after that. Our parents figured out that our friendship had turned sour, but we didn't tell them exactly what happened. I just told my mom that my painting wasn't selected and I'd try again next year. The next few days were the worst days of my life. I missed Chris, and in spite of what Stacy had done, I missed her too, especially when I watched MSA videos alone. It was usually our favorite thing to do together. One day, as I was out in the stable feeding the horses, I heard a familiar voice behind me. Miriam? Chris, what are you doing here? I uh, hope you're not still mad at me for vanishing like that. What? No, but you do owe me an explanation. And then Chris told me that the day he'd come to pick me up, he was talking to Jennifer on the phone. She was really mad at him for dating me. When your seatbelt got stuck, I put the phone aside without realizing the call was still on. She heard me telling you about the prosthetic leg, and I guess she thought that if she let the rumor about my leg spread, I'd just blame you for it, which is exactly what happened. I'm sorry. My goodness, how can anyone be so evil? But how did you figure out that Jennifer was behind all of this? I didn't. Stacy did. Stacy? Yeah, she sent me a recording of Jen's confession. I think you need to go talk to her. I'll wait here. A recording? What had Stacy been up to? I hugged Chris quickly and went looking for Stacy. I found her sitting under a tree. Stacy, I need to talk to you. Yeah, about what? How do you know that it was Jennifer who spread the news about Chris's fake leg? Well, she admitted it herself. What? How and why? That day after I ruined your painting, she came up to me and told me what an excellent job I'd done by showing you your place. I just knew she had something to do with you and Chris breaking up, so I decided to pretend to be friends with her for a while. And sure enough, one day she started boasting about how she'd managed to break your relationship with Chris. She told me everything. Stacy, I don't understand you. On one hand, you ruined my chances of getting into my dream university, and on the other hand, you reunite me with Chris. Why? I... I ruined your painting so that you wouldn't move to Milan. You were the only friend I had, Miriam, and I didn't want to lose you. I already lost my mom. I didn't want to lose more people I love. Stacy was the strongest girl I knew, and it hurt me deeply to see tears in her eyes. You weirdo. You could have just said that and I wouldn't have even participated in the competition. In fact, I decided right then that even if I won, I wouldn't move to Milan. City life is just not for me. I'm happy here with my horses, cows, and my wacko best friend. I hugged Stacy as we both cried and Chris smilingly looked on.